welcome my friends, thank you for coming. And uh, it's my privilege to have uh, my friend uh, Carmen Ander uh, give us the uh, talk today. And uh, if you haven't helped yourself to pop and cookies, which it looks like most of us have, please uh, feel free to do that. And uh, I'm looking forward to a great talk. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I'm Carmen Ander. I've been teaching here at GRCC for five years, and I've already said that just now it's official. Uh, okay, so here's my talk, Group Theoretic Properties of an N-Tone Pitch System. Uh, so this is based on research that I did when I was um, in undergrad um, at Albion College. Uh, this is what like my senior thesis was based on. Uh, so math-wise, it's not like incredibly advanced, even though I have a lot of advanced math in my background, that's not what this is, okay? Um, when I was in college, I double majored in math and music, and so that's like why this came about, because I was like, well, I have to do a thesis, I don't have to do a thesis, I wanted to do a thesis, um, and so, uh, you know, what better to do than mix those two together? I'm just trying to raise this up. Okay. Uh, so here is the overview of what's happening today. We are going to do a brief introduction to cyclic groups. That's the math stuff you need to know. And then we're going to do an introduction to music theory. That's the music theory stuff you need to know. Uh, and then we're going to model the 12-tone system. I know that sounds like gibberish at the moment, but that's where we take the math and the music and I tell you how they work together in this situation. Um, and then we're going to talk about, this is kind of the meat and potatoes, uh, we're going to generalize into an N-tone system. Um, and then we'll look specifically briefly at the end about uh, one specific case. Okay. Okay, so cyclic groups. Um, group theory is um, a branch of abstract algebra. Okay, sometimes that's called modern algebra. So now you can go and tell uh, your parents or your uh, professors or your teachers uh, that you know group theory and uh, they can believe you. Uh, the, okay, so the specific thing we need is the cyclic group of order n, okay, and we uh, denote that by zn, okay, and what it, you're thinking it's just all of the numbers from zero up to the one right before n, okay, so zero, one, two, three, up to n minus one. Okay, and the operation, how we combine those numbers is we add them modulo n, or mod n for short. Okay, the official definition of adding mod n is uh, you add the elements, you know, like three plus four, like you normally do, um, and then you divide by n and find the remainder, but it's actually a lot easier just to think about, well, if I add, you know, this plus this, and I get something too big, something that's not in this range, then I just subtract n to get back to that range. Okay, Okay, and then uh, this is just a definition. An element, uh, one of the numbers in my group, uh, is called a generator if the cyclic group generated by that element, that was math language, okay, so this symbol, uh, which just means, well, I take x, whatever number that is, and I multiply it by two, and I multiply it by three, and I multiply it by four, or in other words, I take x and I do x plus x, and x plus x plus x, and so on. Okay, if that gives me all of the numbers in the group. We're gonna look at an example. Okay, so the cyclic group of order 12. This one is pretty familiar to us, okay, because of clocks. We all know how to tell time. Okay, so Z12, the numbers in our group are zero and one and two and three, all the way up to 11, okay? So difference between what we're doing here and what we see on clocks is we're not calling the top number 12, we're calling it zero, but otherwise you can think of a clock, okay? So addition mod 12, we add and then we make sure we're still between zero and 11, okay? So two plus five is seven. Seven is still between zero and 11, so we stop. Okay, now here's one that looks weird, right? Five plus eight is 13, okay? But 13 is bigger than 12, so I just think about the 13 and then subtract 12, and I end up with one, okay? Another way you could think about this, welcome gentlemen, there are snacks there at that table if you want any. Uh, so one way you could think of this is like if it's five o'clock, 
eight hours later, what time is it? You know, it's not 13 o'clock, it's one o'clock. Okay, um, and then one is a generator of Z12, okay? So this is just illustrating that definition. Okay, so the cyclic group generated by one is one, two times one, three times one, four times one, right, and so on. Okay, when I get 10 times one, and then 11 times one, and then 12 times one, that's 12, which is the same as zero, okay? So we got all of the numbers in Z12, Okay, so that tells us that one is a generator. Okay, now this is a little bit of fun for you to do or uh, to get a snack if you need a snack. Um, find the cyclic group generated by seven, okay, in Z12. Okay, I'm gonna help you with the first couple. The first element is seven. Okay, now seven times two is 14, but in Z12, seven times two is two, yeah. So think 14 minus 12 is two, okay? Uh, seven, uh, let's just add seven, it's easier. What's two plus seven? Nine. nine. Good, what's nine plus seven? Six. 16, but subtract 12. Four. Four, okay, now keep going. Does anyone need paper? Would you like a piece of paper? I got some paper. Okay. <laughs> Hi. You have some. Do you want paper? I'm not going to make you. Okay. Do you need a pencil? No, I need. You're all looking at me as if I should be doing something again, so at least this half is. All right, so this is what we got. We did the first few together, seven, two, nine, four. Okay, and then just keep adding seven. 11, six, one, eight, three, 10, five, zero, seven, and then we keep going. Okay, so the thing to observe is that um, we got all of the numbers in Z12 there. Right, not in the order we're used to seeing them, but they're all there, okay? And so that means that seven is a generator of Z12. Okay, now we're done with math for, you know, five minutes, on to music, okay? So Western concert music is written in a 12-tone equal temperament pitch system. Okay, what does that mean? There's 12 different notes. The equal temperament thing is saying they're evenly spaced. Okay, you know, there's not like a big jump and then a little jump kind of thing. Okay, um, I'm illustrating all our music stuff on a keyboard because we're, I mean, we've all seen one of those before at least. Um, so on the keyboard, uh, there are, uh, we name them 12 different notes, okay? Um, and there's repeating groups of seven white keys. So if we start like here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? This being the first and this being the last. Um, and so there's seven white keys and then five black keys sort of in between. Um, and then like this pattern just repeats over and over. So math people, it's periodic, okay? Um, on the keyboard, higher tones are right and lower tones are left. Okay, just like a real number line usually. Oops, no, oh, oh, apparently if you hit the scrolly, it goes real fast. Okay, uh, so how do we name them? So we name the white keys on the keyboard using uh, the letters A through G and then they repeat. Okay, uh, so like this one here that you can half see is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, so on. Okay, um, and then 
uh, we have these symbols and music um, that we're not gonna use a whole ton here, okay, but just so we can name the black keys. Um, sharp uh, raises a note a half step, okay? So if I say G sharp, I say, okay, well, here's G, but then I go one key to the right, okay? And then flat lowers it by a half step or one key. Um, and so what did I put? D flat, so I go to D and I go one key to the left. Okay, my only point here really is each of those has a name. Okay. Um, and then for the purposes of this uh, talk, we are considering all of the C's to be the same note, okay? Even though like there are octave differences, right? This C is lower than this C and there's another one up here that's higher, okay? C is just C, period. Okay, same with all the other notes. Okay, what's important in music? Okay, that's a very broad question, uh, but we're gonna talk about diatonic scales, okay? This forms the basis of most musical compositions, okay? If you think about the song Twinkle Twinkle, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, do 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 do, right? We just sang all the notes down a diatonic scale. Not all of them, we missed one, but whatever, okay? Um, so they're important. Major diatonic scale, easiest one to notice is C. If I start on C and I do all the white keys, that's C major, okay? Um, but then we can transpose that, okay? So if I think about like take all those yellow dots and just move them one key to the right, that would still be a major scale just not the C major scale, a different one, okay? Uh, in this, I took all of the yellow dots and I moved them, one, two, three spots to the right, okay? So this one I moved from C, one, two, three here. This one I moved from D, one, two, three here, okay? <clears throat> so these yellow dots are also outlining a major scale, okay? Um, and then, not quite so importantly, uh, but still sometimes we have the minor diatonic scale, okay? And the basic one there is the A minor scale is all the white keys starting on A and going up, okay? And then just like I explained with the major scales, you can slide that any number of keys left or right, okay? And then just for language, the first note of the scale we call the tonic, okay? So this is a major scale with tonic C, this is a major scale with tonic E flat. Okay, okay intervals. Uh, intervals in music are just sets of two notes, okay? We name intervals um, by how far apart they, out, they are counting in a diatonic scale, okay? So if we think about our C major scale, okay, and I want to name an interval that starts on C. From C to D would be a second. From C to E would be a third. From C to F is a fourth. From C to G is a fifth, and so on, okay? Um, the ones we care about uh, is uh, the fourth, which is the first and fourth notes of any diatonic scale. I'm just focusing on C for simplicity. Okay, and a fifth is the first and fifth notes. Okay, so for this example, C to G. Okay, you could also go A to E because if I start a diatonic scale on A and slide all the notes, you know, all the little yellow dots I had accordingly, uh, the fifth would be the E. Okay. Do you guys have any questions at this point? I'm just feeling like I'm I'm used to teaching classes, and I would never talk for this long without stopping. <laughs> yes, Brian. Uh, so, is D sharp the same as E flat? It is. Okay. Why do we choose one or the other? For fun? Or? Um, it depends what key your music is written in. Uh, okay. So, it tends to be, you know, if you're writing a piece of music, you either are like mostly just using flats or mostly just using sharps. That's a simplistic answer, but. Uh, what's really fun is if you do things like E sharp, which is really F, which is really F. yeah. 
Other questions? Yeah. Um, does this, or how does this connect with playing chords on a keyboard? Like, um, just, because I, one time was taking guitar chords and playing them on the keyboard. Mm -hmm. Is this part of that, or how does that work together? Um, I guess I'm not quite sure how to answer that. Um, I mean, certainly playing chords on, you know, chords are super important. In fact, I think that's the next slide. Yeah, two important chords. <laughs> okay, so they're very important musically. And so, um, like, the goal being, like, let's take our system and generalize it. Like, chords is something that needs to be in that generalization. I don't know if that answered your question at all. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to understand, but it's all right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about this. So chords are sets of three or more notes. Okay, for us right now, just three notes. So a major chord is if you take a major scale, here's your C major scale, and you take uh, the first and the third and the fifth notes. Okay? I can do other major chords, you know, by sliding those red dots up the same amount. Okay. Um, and then a minor chord is take a minor scale, like here is uh, the A minor scale, and take the first and the third and the fifth notes of that scale. Okay, so what do we have? We have notes, okay, which we're kind of thinking of as the letters. Um, we have scales, we have intervals, we have chords. So there's music theory for you. Now, what does it have to do with math? Okay, so our musical system has 12 notes, 12 tones, okay? And so we're gonna model it using the cyclic group Z12, okay? So uh, we just make each number in our group um, identify, match with um, one of our notes, okay? I chose to make zero C, because like C major is the easiest, um, you know, but there's no particular mathematical reason that has to be true, okay? Uh, so C is zero, C sharp or D flat is one, right? D is two, D sharp or E flat is three, and so on, okay? And then when we get to 11 at B, then we start over at zero, and we start over at C, I guess the letters, we start over at A. Okay, but they all match. Okay, now each element of Z12 also corresponds to an interval, okay? Because remember, we had that idea about like, if it's three o'clock and I go ahead four hours, now it's seven o'clock, okay? It doesn't really make sense to say, well, if it's D and then I add F, then I get a flat. Like, that, what the heck, okay? So we have this idea of uh, the elements of Z12 corresponding to a note, but also corresponding to a, a, a range or a movement, an interval, okay? Uh, so a fifth is seven semitones, okay? So for example, we looked at the fifth C to G, Right, I said in C major, you know, you take the first note and the fifth note, and that's your fifth. So the first note is C and the fifth note is G. Okay, and the group elements, that corresponds to zero and seven. Okay, and so we just say, okay, well, seven is the fifth, right? The number seven is specifically the note G, but also an interval of seven half steps, which is a fifth. Okay, and then similarly, a fourth is five semitones, okay, because C to F is from zero to five, so we say that five is the fourth, which admittedly is a little confusing if you're telling me five is a fourth, but whatever. Okay, um, and then to point out, okay, between a fourth and a fifth, in other words, between five and seven, there's only one number left, right? So six, okay, and that has a special name in music that's called the tritone. Okay, so we did this. Remember I told you to do it on your paper and then you all stared at me like I was supposed to be doing it? 
okay? Um, so we saw that seven is a generator of Z12, right? We started it on the board and then I put it up here. Okay, um, well, now each of these numbers matches with a note, okay? So, let's see, just to be clear. So here's zero, right? So zero corresponds to C, right? And here's seven, so seven corresponds to G, right? And two is D, okay? And here are, are now are the letter note names. Okay, um, and I was gonna point at our music people who are not here. <laughs> I was gonna say, and this is the circle of fifths, okay? So anyone, you must be a musician of some sort, huh? <laughs> okay, so, you know, we all know, us musicians, know that that's like super important, you know, like you learn, what, the second day of music theory or something, <laughs> right? Um, so, seven being a generator, seven being a fifth, circle of fifths, I'm, I'm trying to point out there's a connection here, okay. All right, we need to revisit diatonic scales, okay? Because in group theory, it doesn't make a whole ton of sense to say, well, just take all the white keys and shift them up three spots, okay? So we need a different way of defining, like, what is a major scale, okay? Uh, so, major scale, remember what I said is you start on C, uh, you take all the white keys, and then you can shift that if you need to. Okay. So, look at the circle of fifths. Which of those are used in the C major scale? Okay. So, C is zero, that's here. Okay. D is two, that's here. E is four, that's here. F is uh, five, that's here. G is, where am I, seven, here. A is nine, here. B is 11, here. Okay, so the ones that were used, if you were like shading in as I pointed to them, are the ones from five all the way around up to 11. Okay, so we can create an alternate definition of what is a major scale, okay? So you can take the circle of fifths, take a connected set of seven elements, seven of those blue blobs in my circle, um, and then reorder them so that they're increasing in number, okay? And start with the second connected element. Okay, I'm gonna go back if I can. Okay, just to point at this, okay? So instead of saying, look at the keyboard and take the white keys starting at C, I'm gonna say, okay, well start at five, count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, take those numbers, okay? Rearrange them so they're in order and make this the first one, okay? Now you might think, rearrange them so they're in order, but also make sure you start with zero is sort of redundant, okay? But in order, remember when you get to 12, you loop back, okay? So for example, if instead, just for practice, I start here and I take seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? So the ones from three to nine, I want to rearrange them so they're in order, but start with 10, okay? Because that's the second one in my set, okay? So I would start with 10, and then the next highest one, because 11 isn't one of my numbers, is zero, and then two, and then three, and then five, seven, nine. Does this make sense? I mean, kinda, sorta. <laughs> All right, um, a minor diatonic scale, I'm not gonna worry about so much. You take the same set of elements, you reorder them so they're in order, but you start with the sixth element instead of the second, uh, fifth. I see I said it wrong. Uh, okay, now group theoretic definitions of chords, okay? So a major chord with root x is uh, the set x, x plus four and x plus seven, okay? 
just counting how many keys are in between. Okay. Uh, so for example, C major chord, which is here in the red circles, uh, is C and E and G, and so that's group elements zero and four and seven. Right, so whatever the tonic is, four more than that, and then three more than that. Okay, a minor diatonic chord or a minor chord uh, with root X, okay, is your tonic, three more than that, and seven more than the tonic. Okay, uh, so the one I had there in red dots is A minor, okay, so A and C and E is nine and zero and four. So the tonic is nine. So x is nine. x plus three, nine plus three is 12, but that's zero. Okay, and then zero, well, okay. Nine plus seven is 16, minus 12 is four. Okay, do you guys have questions on music stuff? Or music and math mixed stuff? All right, so now we're gonna generalize, okay? And the whole idea here is, well, we have the octave in music, like at normal everyday life, not this room, okay? We have music, we have an octave, we split it into 12 pieces, each of those pieces gives us a note, okay? Now, what if, like, why 12? Okay, there are other reasons, okay? But how else could we choose that number? Okay, so for right now we're saying, I'm gonna take my octave, I'm going to split it into n equally spaced pieces, okay? And so now I'm gonna have a scale with n notes, or I'm gonna have a system with n notes, okay? And we can model that system with the group Zn, okay? So same cyclic group idea, only, you know, more than 12 probably. Okay, and then the question is, well, how do I need to choose n like to get good alternatives? Now, good is clearly very subjective, okay? Um, but the things I'm gonna focus on are, we want to have fourths and fifths. Those are important. Think about the circle of fifths and how the music people thought that was important. Uh, we need diatonic scales, and we need major and minor chords. This is where we start doing math, people. Okay, uh, so in the 12 tone system, we have the uh, tritone, okay? And the tritone was the element six, and you'll notice that six is half of 12, okay? And then the fourth is one less than that, and the fifth is one more than that, okay? So if we have our system, we take the middle note, and the one right after that and the one right before that are important, okay? So in an end tone system, we are defining the tritone to be n over two, okay? And we're defining the generalized fifth to be the tritone plus one, you know, the one right after that. And we're defining the generalized fourth to be n over two minus one, you know, take the tritone, the one right before that. Okay, and this tells us something. What does this tell us? If I want to take n and divide it by two, I need my n to be uh, even, right? Because nowhere in anything I've said so far today have I used fractions, I don't think, okay? And so if I you know, want to end up with a number that's in my cyclic group, I need the n to be even. Okay, so n must be even, that's restriction number one. The next thing we need to talk about is generalized circle of fifths, okay? So uh, let's see, the circle of fifths, the, I had blue dots, right, and then I named them uh, with notes and music people said, oh, that's really important. Um, so all of that relies on the fact that the fifth is a generator of the cyclic group of order 12. In musical terms, if you do a fifth, and then a fifth, and then a fifth, and then a fifth, you always hit all of the notes eventually, okay? Uh, so the question for us is, which values of n make the fifth, 
this is our generalized fifth, a generator of the cyclic group of order n. Okay. So that's our question. Okay. A generator of the cyclic group. This was just notation that means you take all the multiples of that number, all the multiples of the n over 2 plus 1. Okay. Okay, so we already know that n has to be even. Okay. So I'm going to say even means I can divide it by 2. So I'm going to say n is 2 times k. k is something, it's an integer. Okay, n is twice that. Okay. Then n over 2 plus 1, n is 2k, so divide that by 2, I get k. Okay, so I'm just looking at k plus 1. Okay, the cyclic group generated by k plus 1 is just all multiples of k plus 1. Okay, so here's k plus 1, here's 2 times k plus 1, here's 3 times k plus 1, 4 times k plus 1, I ran out of room, <laughs> 5 times k plus 1, 6 times k plus 1, and so on. Okay, now, Hopefully, eventually I get all of the group elements, but even if they start repeating, definitely I don't have more than n elements here, okay? So if I start with one times k plus one, two times k plus one, and if I go all the way to n times k plus one, I've definitely hit, uh, what am I trying to say, not, I've definitely hit as many as I can hope to hit, okay? Uh, and then this is just to illustrate the one right before that is n minus 1, k plus 1. Okay. Now, remember when we add in zn, uh, we're doing addition mod n, which is the same as 2k. Okay. So for example, look at this element. This is 2k plus 2 when I distribute. Okay. But 2k is 0. Okay. So this isn't really anything more than just 0 plus 2 or 2, okay? So the k plus 1 I have here, this is really just 2, okay? The next one, I have 3k plus 3, okay? But 3k is uh, 2k plus k, and 2k is 0, so I throw that part away, so I get k plus 3. Okay, this is 4k plus 4, but 4k is 2k plus 2k, so 0 plus 0, okay, so that's really just 4. Okay, and I just kept going with that pattern all the way through, okay? So all of these that have an odd number of k's, you have a k. All of these that have an even number of k's, they went away. So you got the 2 and the 4 and the 6, okay? Uh, at the very end, just to point this out, n is 0, n is, yeah, 0, okay. Uh, and so the last element is 0, okay. Uh, this one, when you distribute the n, n is 0, so you can ignore that. So you get negative k uh, minus 1, but negative k is the same as positive k because you can add 2k for free, whatever. Uh, this is minor detail, okay. So it, it boils down to this. Okay, now, look at this list. Every other number here is clearly and obviously even, right? Two is even, four is even, six is even, blah, 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 zero is even. Every other one, okay? But if I want this set to contain all of the elements in Zn, I can't only have even numbers, right? I have to also have the odd numbers, like one, for example, okay? So to make that happen, like, you know, the k can't be odd, because if k is odd, then k plus 1 is even, and k plus 3 is even, right? And then I just have all even numbers, okay? So I have to have k being even, so that these ones that have the k in them end up being odd, because an even number plus an odd number is going to be odd, okay? So we have to have k being even. Uh, let's see, I don't remember what I put on the next slide. Okay, so k being even. I didn't quite spell it out on here. k being even uh, means that you can write k as two times something. 
okay, for some integer m, okay? But then remember n was two times k, so now that's two times two m, or four m, okay? All of that was to say that n now is a multiple of four. So there's another restriction. Do you guys have questions at this point? All right. Now we're gonna generalize scales, okay? So in Z12, a diatonic scale is a connected set of seven elements reordered in, a, in a ascending order, okay? Um, and then which note we start on determines whether it's major or minor or something weird, okay? Um, and so what I want to point out is, look, a connected set of seven elements, remember seven is the fifth in Z12, okay? So in Zn, we define a generalized diatonic scale to be a connected set of n over two plus one elements, that's the fifth in our general Zn. Um, in the generalized circle of fifths, reordered in ascending order, okay? And this was more to remind me in case you pushed back on why does it have to be that number, <laughs> okay? Which is maybe a little beyond what we wanna deal with right now, okay? But seven is the fifth in Z12, seven notes in the diatonic scale, okay? So this is the fifth in Zn, we're gonna have that number of notes in our diatonic scale. Okay, so in Z12, the tonic of the major scale is the second connected element. In Zn, the tonic of the generalized major scale is gonna be the second connected element. Um, I'm not overly worried about the minor scale, so let's, I should have just deleted all the minor scales. Okay, uh, so in Z12, a major chord with root x is this set, and a minor chord with root x is this set. I'm just reminding you of what I said about 10 minutes ago, okay? Um, let's see, clearly in these two sets, uh, the first note and the last note are the same. I, I mean, the first notes are the same and the last notes are the same, okay? Um, and then what are the two smaller intervals? Well, in the major chord from Z x to x plus four, that distance is four, and then from x plus four to x plus seven, that distance is three, okay? And then in the minor chord, those numbers are switched. x to x plus three is a distance of three, and x plus three to x plus seven is a distance of four. So how can we make that three, four switching mirroring situation generalized to our end tone system? Okay, so we definitely want the major and minor chords to span a fifth. Okay, because otherwise, I don't know, that's just, just like crazy. Um, the two smaller intervals, the three and the four we were just talking about, have a difference of one, right? And they sum to a fifth. Okay, so if I have two numbers that have a difference of one, I could call those numbers uh, m and m plus one. Those numbers have a difference of one, okay? And I want the sum of those uh, to be a fifth, which is n over two plus one. Now I can just solve for m. Okay, so this is two m plus one, equals n over two plus one, I can subtract one and divide by two and figure out that m is n over four. Oops. Okay, so in the previous slide I had the three and the four, right, that were switched between the major and minor chords. So now we don't have three and four, we have n over four and n over four plus one, okay? So the generalized major chord with root x is x plus, uh, with a super weird line break, x plus n over four plus one, and x plus n over two plus one, this is the fifth. Okay, and then the generalized minor chord, we have x, x plus n over four, and x plus n over two plus one.
All right, so what's happened? We're saying, I have something I'm calling the generalized major chord, right? The first note is the tonic, wherever I decide to start, nothing interesting there. Okay, the last note, the third note here is the fifth of whatever scale that is, okay? And I'm saying that uh, the X plus N over four plus one is the, what music people call the third, it's the middle note in the chord. Okay, but, um, okay, we said, okay, I've just rephrased this. Okay, so uh, in Z12, the major chord with tonic X is the tonic chord of the major diatonic scale beginning on X. What do I mean? When I first define scales, I said if I have C, D, E, F, G, I take the first and the third and the fifth of those and that's a major chord, okay? And then I redefined it in math language, but that was where we started in music land, okay? Uh, so in ZN, if I'm saying this is our, our major chord starting at zero, so I don't have to have all the X's everywhere, okay? Uh, then, you know, we better make sure that this note is actually in that major scale. Okay? So we need to make sure N over four plus one is in the major diatonic scale beginning on zero. Okay, and this is gonna give us another restriction on N. Okay, this slide is terrible. I know that those numbers are small. Okay, this is uh, the very generalized circle of fifths. Okay, so zero, good starting spot, okay. The fifth is n over two plus one. Okay, so n over two plus one, two times n over two plus one, three times n over two plus one, and so on. Okay, somewhere in the middle, uh, here, n over two times n over two plus one. This is the one right before that. Okay, so this is just this generalized circle of fifths. Okay. Um, we, yeah, we were talking about defining diatonic scales, okay? So I had said, well, a diatonic scale is I take a connected set of n over two plus one elements, okay? And then I reorder them, okay? So if I start here and I want n over two plus one elements, the question is, you know, I go around here, where, which, where's the last one? Where do I stop? Okay, and so you stop um, here. Okay, if you look at these numbers, this is a one, invisible one. Okay, here's two, three, four, five. Okay, uh, here we're at n over two minus one, but then there's also these two I didn't count yet. Okay, so here's the first one, here's the last one. All I've done over there in white is just written those down in a list so I can stop looking at this crazy circle. Okay, there's that same list, exact same. Okay, now remember that I said n is a multiple of four. I guess I said that over there, okay? So n is four times something I'm gonna call k, okay? So I took this list, everywhere I saw an n, I rewrote it as four k. So n over two plus one now is two k plus one everywhere it showed up. Okay, then what, remember we're adding mod n or mod 4k. So every time I have a multiple of 4k, that's really zero. So like this one, I get 4k plus two. Well, 4k is really zero, so this is just two, right? Same idea here, four times 2k, that's 8k. Well, that's 4k and 4k, so that's really zero. So by the time we get rid of all of the multiples of 4K, we have this list. Okay. Okay, this is that same list I just flashed, just moved over. Okay, now we gotta put them in order. Okay, and I was building the generalized major scale with tonic zero. Okay, so I'm starting at zero and I'm going in order lowest to highest, okay. So if I look through this, I have even numbers, right? Zero, two, four. This is the last even number, okay? Two K minus two, okay? 
And then the number right after 2k minus 2 is 2k minus 1, and that shows up here. Right? And then if I do the every other ones, I get the rest of this. Okay. All right. Remember, our goal was make sure that in our diatonic scale, we have the diatonic chord. Okay? So, look at this. This, this list now is our major diatonic scale in order. Okay, so the lowest note is zero. You know, somewhere in the middle we hit the fifth. Okay, and so what? We need the third in there somewhere, right? And specifically we need the third between the tonic and the fifth. Okay, so there. The third is n over four plus one. Remember we did this whole thing. Uh, this was the smaller of the two mirror images, okay? So we need the n over 4 plus 1 to be in here somewhere. Okay, now technicality can't be this one because this one is the fourth. It doesn't make sense to say the generalized third and the generalized fourth are the same thing. Okay, uh, so the, the generalized third has to be above my hand. Okay, and look, all of those are even numbers. I guess if you trust me with the dot, dot, dot. Okay, so those are all even numbers. And this has to be one of those numbers, so I guess that has to be an even number. Okay. So, if this has to be even, I have to be able to take uh, n divided by 4, right, because n is a multiple of 4, and uh, that should give me an odd number. No, uh, yeah, an odd number, so that when I add 1, I get an even number. Okay, so n over 4 should be an odd number. That means n has to be an odd multiple of 4. Okay. Conclusions. That seems important. Uh, okay, so what's the most important aspects of the 12-tone musical system? Fourths and fifths, the circle of fifths, and that it's a generator. Uh, major and minor chords exist, and they're in the major diatonic scales. Okay, and then what other systems display those properties? Systems of n tones, where n is an odd multiple of four. Okay, these are just some numbers that are odd multiples of four. So four times three, four times five, four times seven, four times nine. Okay, when you start, let's see, you could technically do four times one as an odd multiple of four, but then you have weird things like, <laughs> Yeah, a system with four notes, you know, like too many things overlap for it to make much sense. <coughs> All right. Do you guys have questions right now? Yes. Um, I lost the link between N having to be even in the first restriction and N needing to be an odd multiple of four in the third restriction. We had a second restriction. Yeah. That said, um, uh, let's see, it was to make sure that our generalized fifth was actually a generator of Zn, okay? And it turned out that that meant that n had to be a multiple of four. Okay. And then um, we can kind of just say that, let's see, if n has to be a multiple of four, and then to get the chords to fit in into the diatonic scales. That's what means it has to be an odd multiple of four. Okay. I don't know if that answered your question at all. You're gonna have to sign YouTube right now. <laughs> Probably have to watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's not a test, you know. No, I know, I'd like to learn this. So I, I, I missed something somewhere in there. Um, so then I thought just real quickly we'd go through this very specific case when n is 20 just to tie things back to something a little bit more concrete so there's not all these n's floating around, okay? So uh, the system with 20 tones we can model uh, with the numbers 0 through 19, okay? The fifth is n over 2 plus 1, but n is 20, so it's 10 plus 1, so 11, okay? Um, here's our circle of fifths, right? So here's 0. Right, and then we add 11, and then we add 11 but subtract 20, and then we add 11, and then we add 11 but subtract 20, okay, and so on. Okay, and 
if you wanted to count all those little blue rectangles, assuming I didn't make any mistakes, there are 20 of them. And they're all different numbers. Okay, so we got all of the numbers, all of the notes in our system. So does that mean someone took an octave and developed an instrument where they divided that octave into 20? Well, yeah, sure, it's called a computer. It's a computer that's that. <laughs> but that's what would happen, that's what that means, right? That yes, that yes, that's means. what that means. That there doesn't exist an instrument. There does not exist an instrument like that that I am aware of. You have things like, you know, trombone or violin where you can play, it. you know, you can slide your finger or you can slide your, what's that called on a trombone? A slide? <laughs> and so you can play any interval. So it would be possible, uh, but I don't know anyone that's trained to play it like that. Um, so fifth is 11, so a major diatonic scale would be 11 connected elements, okay? And if I want a major diatonic scale, the second one is the tonic, okay? So if I want uh, the major diatonic scale starting on zero, I connect 11 elements, but I make sure the second one in my set is the zero, okay? And then I just put those numbers in order. That gives me my major diatonic scale, which is those numbers. Okay, and now let's say we wanted to invent an instrument. Okay, and I'm a piano player, so I want to invent a piano to play in 20 tones. Okay, well, in the 12 tone system, we started off with C major saying start at C and play all the white keys. Okay, well, here's a major scale. Let's make these all the white keys, right? Okay, so here's a keyboard, right? And the white keys are zero and two and four and six and eight and nine and 11 and 13 and 15. And I conveniently covered up the top right now, okay, because I can't just plain skip the number one, right? That means there has to be a key between the zero and the two, so that would be a black key, right? And a key between the two and the four, okay? But look, no key between here and here, right? So just like on our regular keyboard, the black keys are in groups of two and three, Okay, here we have black keys in groups of four and five. Uh, major and minor chords, that's just examples, it's really not interesting. Here's if you wanna know more, now I can stop talking. <laughs> so what questions do you guys have? John? The development of ideas, you sometimes have the question of what came first. Mm -hmm. That's not really a question here, because music was around long, long before there was group theory. The question that occurred to me is, were any of the early developers of group theory were they musicians? I have no idea. It's intriguing to think about that. And the other thing is, you have... Uh, and my, my knowledge of music, as you may painfully aware of today, used to be pretty good about 50 years ago. Okay. And I forgot it all. But I seem to recall that in an octave, um, you get a 12-tone scale, you go up the notes, the 12 notes, a factor of 2 to the 112, so that you double your pitch when you go from yeah. A to the next A. Mm -hmm. So if you have a 20-tone scale, and this is really to your question, I think, is uh, could you go up by to the 120th? Yeah. Okay. Has that been done? Didn't we just do that? No, no. Has that <laughs> Maybe I don't understand. People can actually perform music. I don't know. I had, okay, I had grand plans of taking this weird looking keyboard and creating like a little interactive button that would actually play the pitch on each, but uh, late last night I decided sleeping was more important, so I didn't do that. <laughs> probably a wise decision. Yeah. Has uh, the 12 tone music octave been proven to be a group? Like have people done more research on that? Kind of what we're taking is like, there's a whole group theory and we know Z12 is a group, like there's no question about it. And we're just saying like, 
let's just take that group and kind of lay it on top of this music thing I'm just and just say it is. Has been defined for something like that that would make it follow the group properties. Yeah, you would define, um, you know, like if I want to do, uh, okay, two plus three, I would start on note number two, which would be D, and go up three half steps, and that lands me on F, <laughs> right? And so like that F is still in the group. So that's how you would define the addition. Start on the note, use kind of the second thing in the addition uh, to determine an interval and then count up. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you're using an instrument like the trombone, um, with your idea, <clears throat> with the idea of the twenty, the twenty note octave or whatever, mm -hmm. um, when when you're going between notes, when with your slide, you know you have your set your mm -hmm. set spots for the certain notes, but you find the in between between those two spots. Would that be what? Yeah. Okay. So. I do not play the trombone, but if you want like da, 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 like that's an octave, right? Mm -hmm. So now take that and split it into 12 notes. That's what you're used to playing. But now don't do that, split it into 20 notes. So like instead of 12 stopping points, there's gonna be 20 stopping points. Do we know if all 20 would be audible? Or do you take yeah. by the human ear? Oh yeah. I mean, the, the trick would be finding a player who has the ear to be able to hit those notes. You know, because like, have you ever heard a fifth grader play the trombone? You know, they're like all over the place. You know, so it takes a lot of training for people to hit the 12 notes accurately. Uh, so now you just have to like retrain your whole ear and mind and brain to hit the other notes. Yes, Brian. So I feel like, uh, my career of playing the guitar was quickly stopped by the fact that I couldn't actually hit those 12 notes. Correctly. Yeah, guitars I, have frets. It, like, You're done. 12.15 is what I was hitting, and finally my teacher was like, you know what, this is just to stop now, right? Because I couldn't hit the. So now I'm curious about the fact that if I switch to a 20, like, mm -hmm. maybe I was closer to the 20 than I was to the 12, right? Because I couldn't sure. And you know, we, we nicely say at American Idol, like, oh, you're kind of pitchy, right? When, they're, when their notes come not mm -hmm. quite where it's supposed to be. So I'm curious if a 20 tone system or others, where the, where, the, where the fractions become so small that our human ear can't really distinguish between what a nice major scale is versus your, your being pitchy or your off. Okay. If I were to actually get this programmed in the computer and play you the major scale, you know, zero through 19, like what's shown there, you would think it would sound funky. Because we're not used to that. Right, because you're not used to it. Um, there is a threshold um, at which like a normal person's human ear. Hi. I have a Okay. We will, we will clear out momentarily, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, so there's a threshold at which the human ear can hear the difference between pitches. So if I were to take this and split it into, uh, you know, 2,800, like then from one pitch to the next, I wouldn't be able to hear the difference and probably neither would you. Okay. <laughs> 